Welcome everyone to the Williamsport City Council meeting of uh, this Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. It's 6.30 p.m. and we're meeting remotely. Uh, we'll move to item number one, approval of City Council minutes dated 10-08-20. Is there a motion and a second? I move. Uh, questions or comments from Council? Any corrections? Hearing and seeing none. Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, we'll move to item two, limited courtesy of the floor. There's been no request tonight. So we'll move right down to Item three, with the, which is a presentation from Ron Frick, president of the Lycoming United Way, uh, Lycoming County United Way. Um, he's going to give us a, a brief uh, update and overview of, of the United Way, uh, just to preface his remarks. Uh, we all know what the United Way has meant to our, our community, our county, and many people the many people and organizations that it helped. And this is normally a very busy time of year for them, but uh, like everything else, um, they've had to change things and uh, things have been altered and delayed uh, because of the pandemic. So uh, I just felt it was appropriate. We had had a conversation in another setting and that uh, we should all be updated about where the United Way is at right now. Um, we don't ever want to forget what they do and how vital they are to our community and our county. So having said that, uh, good, good evening, Mr. Frick, and you have the floor, sir. Good evening, Mr. Allison and members of city council. Um, I don't see the mayor on yet, but uh, we're, we're, uh, we're honored this morning, this afternoon or this evening to, uh, to present to you sort of an update on the United Way. Um, obviously, being in person would be more valuable. Uh, we could, I could use my hands more, um, but we're grateful for the opportunity. Um, as Mr. Allison said, my name is Ron Frick. It's been my privilege to be the president and CEO of the United Way for the last four years. Um, we are an affiliate of United Way Worldwide, which is the largest privately funded nonprofit in the world. And for almost 100 years, we've been proud to be headquartered here in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. The importance of being uh, privately funded and local is what I really want to focus a few minutes on. Um, and while we, we certainly appreciate the access to governmental grants like the Homeless Assistance Program and the Emergency Food and Shelter Program that we administer, we rely on our community investors to make a difference in places where government can't or shouldn't be operating. And so we are grateful for the opportunity, any chance we have to speak to government leaders, especially in our community, which is, which is so, uh, so important to us. Uh, I do just this afternoon, as a matter of fact, uh, a major city organization in our community, uh, the leader of that organization made a significant leadership gift. Uh, I'm humbled by that uh, and also grateful for the fact that we have leaders in our community that, uh, that can make a difference. I'm gonna try to share my screen now and just run through a few PowerPoint um, slides with you. You can just all let me know if you can, if you can see the screen that I'm sharing. Does everybody have the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay. Yes. Terrific. Awesome. Thank you. So um, let me just go through a couple of these these slides with you. Um, the theme for this year and for last year uh, is is change doesn't happen alone. Um, we need our community to uh, to effectuate change, and so um, very important for us to to recognize the fact that it takes a community to really do the work that we do. Let me go to the right slide. So there are many, uh, there are many ways to give, uh, as you all know, but there's really only one United Way. Uh, and despite changes that have been brought about by the COVID crisis uh, in all of our communities, we've been working with our existing partners like UPMC, the Chamber of Commerce, the City of Williamsport, 
on, on things like Help the Helpers. Uh, I was honored to sit on the Mayor's COVID-19 Task Force and our work with the First Community Foundation Partnership of Pennsylvania in standing up the COVID-19 United Community Funds, which to date have provided almost three quarters of a million dollars to 101 nonprofits in nine counties, including a $100,000 investment from our United Way here in Lycoming County. We know that change doesn't happen alone. And so this year, our goal is to raise $1.6 million after raising about $1 million last year. The, last year's campaign breakdown is, is pretty simple. Lycoming County carries the load and has for many, many years. Uh, five years ago, we, we were honored to be able to um, participate with Sullivan and Tioga County. And so we are now a multi-county regional United Way. Um, and so that's that's been a very important um, change in our organization over the years. This is just a representative list of um, the program partners um, that we support. Um, there are 23 uh, program par programs or, or agencies that we support uh, and, and that encompasses 36 programs in three different counties. In addition to our community uh, grants that we, we, we allocate every year, the, the United Way also um, provides over $236,000 in support through the Lycoming County Emergency Food and Shelter Program, which is a federally funded program, and the Homeless Assistance Program, which is a county funded program. We also support uh, Pennsylvania 211, which is uh, an organization uh, that supports uh, assistance, referral assistance to individuals who call 211 or who text uh, the zip, their zip code to 898211. The 211 service was particularly uh, active during uh, the COVID-19 crisis initially and has tripled the volume of calls that they've taken in 19 counties in Northeastern and, and Central Pennsylvania. So we're very, we're very proud of the work that that group does out of, uh, out of Wilkes-Barre. By supporting our United Way, um, you're doing a lot of things. You're preventing hunger and homelessness. You're putting people on the path to financial stability. You're preparing children to succeed in school and beyond, and you're ena enabling people with disabilities to maintain their independence. Um, lots of ways for you to help our particular organization. And for almost a hundred years, we've been working to improve the situation of those in our community um, to make things better. Where do your dollars go? 97% of the dollars that we raise stay in the county uh, that we raise them in. Uh, we do support uh, United Way of Pennsylvania for advocacy uh, and also United Way worldwide, but it's a very small portion of our budget. All of the money that's raised in Lycoming County or Tioga and Sullivan County stay in those individual counties uh, to support the programs in those communities. Why do we need your support? Well, the United Way invests in the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. And we believe that a community really helps each other. And we know that the quality of life for all of us is stronger when we all work together. And so we're grateful for the community partnerships that we've formed over the last 98 years, uh, including the partnership with, with the city, the county, the Chamber of Commerce. And as you can see in the picture on the screen, um, our friends from UPMC who have been incredibly supportive um, of, our, of our efforts at the United Way. Just a couple of pictures um, of some of the things we've done, including um, the mayor who was kind enough to sit in a dunk tank. Um, we, we were hoping we would get to do that again this year, but um, COVID put a squash to our, our kids carnival on Pine Square. Um, we have been supported unbelievably um, you know, by, by city administration. The mayor has been very active in working with us to read to kids and, and supporting um, you know, packing of boxes and uh, was, was instrumental in getting us uh, connected with Parks and Recreations this summer so that we could support the feeding program with some books. The, the picture in the bottom corner is kids um, over at Shaw Park um, getting books from the United Way. And we had, a, we had a ton of parents come over that afternoon to, to pick up books to take home for their kids. That was all provided by a grant uh, in cooperation with the Department of Education and United Way of Pennsylvania. 
just a little a little summary of what a dollar buys. Really, you know, the, the, the purpose of this slide is to show you that it that every dollar really matters. And so by giving up a candy bar a week, if if candy bars are still a dollar, I don't know anymore, I don't eat them. Um, you're, you can supply 289 pounds of produce to families suffering from food insecurity through the program that we fund at the American Rescue Workers in Williamsport, the Comprehensive Emergency Assistance Program. And the numbers go up from there. Our leadership giving level is $1,000 a year. We are challenging people who can do that uh, to, to do it. Uh, it. It basically equates to $4 a day. Uh, anybody who has seen me in, in town knows that I probably spend at least that much at Alabaster. Um, so it just means giving up one cup of coffee instead of, you know, drinking two or three. So um, anybody can help really support uh, in a big way. A couple of ways to give. Um, you can visit our website and there's a there's a give button in the right hand, upper right hand corner. You can text if you're so inclined um, the word live united to 50155. Uh, it will give you a, a link back and ask for credit card and, and contact information and then we'll process that. Um, here, here in the office, or you can get the old-fashioned way uh, and and have and get a paper pledge form. Uh, I know I've talked to, to um, both Mr. Allison and and Mr. Slaughter about uh, the potential of engaging again with city employees to try to support United Way from a workplace perspective, and so we're going to continue to have dialogue to see if we can start that back up again after a few years of uh, of really not working um, to solicit the city for you know for funding. So. We'll talk some more about that. And then finally, the last slide, there, there, there are a number of ways that you can support us. It's not just all about supporting us financially. Um, our, our, our theme for many, many years has been to give, to advocate and to volunteer. You can give financially, you can give your time, you can give your resources, you can give your advocacy on behalf of the United Way. Mr. Allison was kind enough to do that at the beginning of this session. Uh, we believe we're a very vital organization in the community. We believe that, that our programs and our partners depend on us and those that they serve. Um, and then you can volunteer and it's a little bit tougher um, during COVID, but we've done, as you can see in the, in the one slide, a lot of work, um, even, even with COVID. Um, we're in the process of working, as you probably saw today on social media with the YWCA, um, to really put an end to domestic violence. Uh, we support that program, the Wise Options Program. We're working on uh, a program in November for Homeless Awareness Month, which we're very excited about. Uh, and then we've, you know, we've done a lot really to support local downtown businesses, um, buying gift cards and using incentives for, uh, for employees and campaign incentives that, you know, that really support um, those who have supported us for many, many years. So um, with that, I will um, turn it back to Mr. Allison, or, and I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Really appreciate your, your overview there. Um, I'll open it up to the members of council. Do you have any questions you would like to just applaud what's going on? Mr. Pelosi. Yeah, Mr. Frick, if one wanted to volunteer, what's the best way to get a hold of the United Way to, to schedule to volunteer? That, that's a great question. Um, the best way to get, get a hold of us is to call us. Um, you can you can email us uh, at United Way, just you know, one word, United Way at lcuw.org. We keep an eye on that on that mailbox. Um, and, and generally what we've been doing now is really just connecting people with um, partners in the community that that are that are looking for help. I know. Uh, on December 22nd, there's an opportunity for folks to help us with car parking and, and serving over at the American Rescue Workers for their food distribution. So there's lots of opportunities like that that are socially distant, um, you know, to, to get involved. So I appreciate, I appreciate that question. Yeah, that's one more question, if I may. Is there a, um, a schedule on your website that shows all the upcoming events? Uh, that way, if one did want to volunteer, they could go through and kind of make plans to volunteer at, a, at a, an event. In, in normal years, I would say yes. Um, un unfortunately, uh, there, there are no real events scheduled for the United Way. Our, our biggest event, as many of you know, that, that participated last year was Live United in Music at the Community Arts Center. Um, October 1st, unfortunately, came and went this year, and that, that's a $30,000 uh, impact to our budget. So we're, we're looking for any way we can right now 
um, to support the community by raising money, not only the old fashioned way through work, workplace campaigns, but also to try to come up with some unique events where people can participate and, and raise, money, um, raise money remotely. Um, so we're working with, uh, with the artist that was here last year with Walt Strait and some others in the community to try to, to, try to do something um, you know, that doesn't require us to be in a facility. So, but I, the best way to keep in touch with us really, Vince, is to, you know, check us out on Facebook. Um, social media, our social media presence is, is very active. Um, we've been supported by the Sun Gazette and by NorthCentralPA.com and lots of other media outlets. Um, but the, but the, greatest, the greatest source of, of current information, I would say, would be, you know, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Very much, Mr. Frick. You're very welcome. Thank you, Mayor Slaughter. Said briefly, uh, you know, sometimes I think it is, and Ron and I have talked about this, that that folks don't really know the impact that the United Way has. They might uh, think that I'll just donate directly to uh, whatever nonprofit of their choice, but really, it does your dollar goes way farther uh, if you donate that to the United Way, and Ron. Um, does a great job of, of really detailing that and how $5, you know, directly to a nonprofit, it only goes so far, but $5 to United Way, uh, it goes a lot farther. So um, I obviously support the United Way and the work that they do. And they are very, uh, as Ron said, they're vital to our community. So thank you, Ron, for the presentation and for the work that everybody United Way does and their partners. Thank you. Anybody else from council or administration that would? Um, I just uh, agree with everything uh, Mayor Slaughter said and, and Vince and, and yourself, Ron. Um, you know, when, when we're in times like this with the, the pandemic and everything gets upset, um, the needs don't go away. and it's something that I think we all have to keep reminding ourselves of that <clears throat> there are there are those very much less fortunate than than all of us here tonight, and um, we need to remember that, that that just doesn't disappear because uh, there's a COVID nineteen virus around or uh, other things going on. Um, we need to uh, keep that in our hearts and at the forefront of our actions uh, because it's closest to home. Um, there are a lot of things that we get involved with or see that uh, they're important, but they're not, you know, I think our we're our neighbors and our brother's keeper and that's the people that are closest to us. So um, I think, uh, and I know Mayor Slaughter wants to, uh, in, Council's ready to cooperate to gear back up within the city um, the efforts um, to to coordinate the giving to United Way through all our employees and uh, and elected officials. So it's uh, that will be a, an easy an easy but immediate goal for us to, to move on in that respect. Well, let me let me uh, let me add, Mr. Allison. You know, it, it, we we uh, we believe th that the United Way is the organization that's prepared to to really uh, participate in the recovery. Um, you know, we have lots of great organizations in our community, and I mentioned a couple of them: the American Rescue Workers, the Salvation Army, the American Red Cross. You know, the immediate disaster recovery um, resources we have in the community are fantastic. Um, this is going to be a longer term recovery. I have uh, I have the privilege of sitting on the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank Board. Uh, you know, this is a long-term thing. Right now, there is plenty of food, but resources are going are gonna to be limited as we go forward. And so our partners right now are stressed to the max to try to support um, the increased demand on services. And, and we're at a point where, you know, where our revenues have been compromised by, by COVID-19. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's very difficult right now to, you know, try to raise funds, you know, particularly in workplace campaigns where, you know, where people, many of whom are out of work. Um, but we, you know, we've, we've been involved with the chamber. We, we stood up uh, very quickly um, to work with our friends at ShopVac, with CareerLink and with Pennsylvania 211, uh, you know, just to try to support, you know, folks who, who may have, in some cases, never needed the services of United Way ever before. Um, and now they do. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're thrilled 
and honored to be here for you know almost 100 years. We'll be celebrating our 100th year in, in 2022. Uh, and the city has been here with us the entire time. So um, we're grateful for all of your all of your support and for all of your leadership. Well said, Ron. Uh, thank you so much tonight for, uh, for interacting with us and educating us and, and all the citizens of Williamsport. And we appreciate all that you do. Yep. Thank you again for the invitation. I, I'm, I'm grateful. Well, we'll move on to uh, item four. Resolution setting the city council meetings uh, for the year 2021. Uh, we discussed this in depth at the last meeting. So um, everyone's had a chance to look over the schedule and the time and, and everything there. Are there any more comments or questions on that from council members? As it stands now, uh, we're going to meet, um, whether we meet in person or by Zoom, it'll be 7 p.m. Um, starting in 2021. Uh, and we will accommodate both in a hybrid matter for as long as needed. So, um, and maybe permanently if we think that works out pretty well. Um, hearing and seeing no questions. Um, this is our uh, resolution, so um, I'll ask for a motion. A move. Seconded. Motion has been moved and seconded. Any questions or corrections? Hearing and seeing none on the resolution, please, Mrs. Frank. Did, did we lose you? Janice? Mr. Yoder? Yes. Mr. Pelliz? Yes. Mrs. Katz? Yes. Mr. Banks? Yes. Mr. Allison? Yes. Motion passes. 6-0. Or 5-0, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, Mr. Um, Allison, if I could interrupt for a minute. Yes. We do have a representative here for number nine, and number nine should be real fast. If we can get this on, Mrs. Brown can get on and get off. That's up to you, sir. Okay. Um, let's move down to item nine. Is everybody on board with that? Um, it's a certificate appropriateness for 25 West Third Street. Is there a motion in the second from council? So move. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Durani. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mr. Allison and council. Um, what we have before you is a request for a certificate of appropriateness for the property located at 25 West 3rd Street. Um, Chartwell Logging LLC owns the property. What they wish to do is really to replace what's there. There's one ground sign and three wall signs. Um, I have attached a site plan showing the locations of the signs which are in the same general area of the signs that are there and attach pictures of what the signs will look like once they're on the, on the building. And as I said, I do have a representative here and myself, if you have any questions of either one of us. Thank you, Mr. Uh, question, question, question. I here is see no question. So, okay. On the resolution, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoda. Yes. Mr. Pelizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Mr. Alice. Yes. Uh, motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Thank you. Um, what about item 10, Mr. Gerardi, then? Um, we do not have any representative, which is not required by the ordinance, but we can do that if you wish. Um, well, let's let's go back up so we can... Five uh, days from others. There, days. Um, if I may, there may be someone on. There's a, a call-in number, 814-327-9729. Oh, 
Okay. Um, I know Mr. Nard did reach out to the individual. I'm not sure if that's the individual that's representing the, um, the property and the signs. The individual that's called in with that number, could you identify yourself, please? Hi, it was Sue from Blair. I was calling about the uh, the Merrill Lynch sign. Okay, that's the one that was just that was the ones that were just approved, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll move up to item five. Um, would you read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution to approve the installation of the Central Pennsylvania Gold Star Family Memorial Monument at the Lycoming County Veterans Memorial Park. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion from council? So move. So move. Second. Okay, there's a, a motion and second. Uh, Mrs. Katz? Yes, uh, I'm very honored to be presenting this resolution. Uh, this has been, uh, this is going to be an incredible monument that's going to be com coming up to uh, the Veterans Memorial Park. Uh, I would like to read the, the rest of the resolution because I, I think it says something. It says the, the Herschel Woody Williams Medal of Honor Foundation is responsible for the funding of the Central Pennsylvania Gold Star Families Memorial Monument. The foundation serves Central Pennsylvania Gold Star family members and relatives who have sacrificed a loved one for our freedom in the armed forces of the United States. The foundation's mission statement is to honor, recognize, and serve Gold Star families and the legacy of their loved ones who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Uh, the city, city council and the city of Williamsport and the administration supports the installation of the Central Pennsylvania Gold Star Family Memorial Monument at the Lycoming County Veterans Memorial Park. Um, the, the committee that is working on the Veterans Memorial Park with John um, Markley and Dennis Bennett, uh, they have gone above and beyond as far as bringing so many uh, features to the park. If, you have, if people have not been up there, it is incredible what they have done. Um, one of the things that um, is going to be coming also with probably, uh, I think next year, right, John? No, October 28th is when the A16 is going to be coming down uh, from the airport onto the Memorial Park. This will be October 28th, and the movement of that plane will be at 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. in the morning. So if anybody's interested in watching this, this plane, coming down the beltway, I think it would be an incredible sight to see. But John, I would like to turn this over to you because I know you have a presentation with you and Dennis as far as what this monument has to say and offer. Um, and I think the public will be very amazed. Thank you, Monty and uh, Randy Allison, President Council, Council members and administration. Thank you for letting us be here tonight to sp speak about this Gold Star Family Monument. Um, I received a call about a month ago from uh, Connie Howard about a gold star. The committee that we set for for the mayor and the council, we've been talking about the gold star and the blue star. But this came about, and about a week later, Dennis Norman, who sits here to my right, uh, also called. We had a meeting at our council, at our commission, and we all approved this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let Dennis, this is Dennis Norman. Uh, he's a retired Lieutenant Colonel, United States Marine Corps, also semi-retired engineer. <laughs> I've been trying to draft him to come to our committee, but he says he's full, even though he's retired, <laughs> he's got more to do than he wants. So I will turn it over to Dennis. Dennis. Thank you. And thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. Uh, I'll ask John, just kick me when I talk too much, because I have a tendency to do that. But Engineers. Yeah, I am an engineer. Uh, worked in the local area here for quite a few years, but it's time for me to stop working a little bit. But uh, I thought everybody, pretty much everybody knew what a Gold Star family was. And I was in a restaurant last night and I, we were talking about a particular beer called Fallen, where it has the names of these people on. And we told them that for every four pack sold in the state of Pennsylvania, we have a dollar donated to our Gold Star Family Memorial. And he asked me what a Gold Star family was. 
And uh, so part of our project also includes a little bit of education and we're going to be doing, we've already done a couple interviews with uh, online uh, newspapers and uh, an online magazine on the pulse, I think it is. And we're going to also be talking to web weekly and the sun gazette and it'd be an education process because as it turns out, not everybody knows what a gold star family is. Um, but I came on, uh, I was commissioned just before the end of the Vietnam war and I can tell you from experience that uh, as a nation, we lost our way and we did not treat our veterans very well. We did not treat our goals, our families very well. And uh, I am proud that that is no longer the case. And uh, I have met since I retired in 1993, I have met way too many gold star family. So, uh, and it's just, it's just uh, quite an experience for me when I get uh, an opportunity to meet a gold star family. But I was invited to the opening of a, of a memorial in Lovettsville, Virginia. And I think we're going to have some pictures of what it looks like down there. Uh, I was invited to go to that opening on September 11th of this year. That's, that's the Lovettsville Memorial you, you see right there. And I was uh, honored to be invited to go down for the unveiling. And president of that was Chief Warrant Officer for Herschel Woody Williams, United States Marine Corps, retired. He is the only living Medal of Honor recipient from World War II. He's 97 years old. He, the Medal of Honor was for his actions on Iwo Jima as a flamethrower operator. And what a remarkable man. And I won't bore you too much, but I will just tell you that he, at some point in his life, decided that we need to remember the Gold Star families. And he created this monument and put one in his hometown in West Virginia. And when he was done, it was a it was a grand effort. And when he was done, he said, wow, we did a wonderful job. And his grandson said, Pat, we're not done. We need to have one of these in every state in this country. So they started this Gold Star Family, uh, um, the Herschel Woody Williams Medal of Honor Foundation. Foundation. And uh, they helped communities throughout the country establish these memorials in their community. So they're a nonprofit and, and they assist uh, yes, the money for the monument is going to come through them. They're going to pay for the actual monument, but we're raising the money for them. So our committee of five, while I was in Virginia, uh, I met two really wonderful families, Ken and Tammy Feast here from uh, Williamsport and Bart and Connie Howard. Bart and Connie Howard are a Gold Star family and uh, their son, Abram, was a United States Marine who was killed in Afghanistan. Uh, you probably have heard that name. Um, I think there was like 6,000 in attendance at his funeral here in the city of Williamsport. Yeah, Mainer Street Bridge was named that. Park and, Street. Yeah. yeah. We named what? Mainer Street Bridge Art is named. Street. Art Street Bridge is named after Abram. So anyhow, as, as our motto is, just like Woody has said, the cause is greater than I. So when we were down in Lovettsville, Virginia, I met Gold Star families from all over the country. One lady had come in from San Diego. And it's an amazing thing to be around these people. And we as, as a group from right here in central Pennsylvania said, we need one of these. And we decided that we need one of these at the Lycoming County Veterans Park. So we presented to the committee and uh, it, I think it'll fit in there beautifully. I am a retired, I'm not quite retired yet, but I am a civil site engineer uh, that has worked in this area. I will have, uh, I've already done plans of the park, the layout of it to make sure everything fits. So we know where the, so I have a site plan for this thing that shows the A6 intruder and uh, where this memorial would go. The plans right now is as you come into the entrance, the Gold Star Family Memorial will be the first one on the right. And then the next one would be the uh, A6 intruder uh, followed by the tank. Uh, we as a committee of five will raise the money to pay for this memorial. Lock, stock and barrel, everything complete sitting on the site. Uh, and we know when that's done, our job is not done because we've already talked about some things that we can do to raise additional funds to go to the veterans committee to help with some of the maintenance of the cutting of the grass and those kind of things. We've already talked to him about uh, supporting his brick program with some Gold Star families and some things. But uh, our budget's $75,000. We're whittling away at it. Uh, we're just shy. We've been doing this for two and a half weeks and we're just shy of uh, $20,000 at actual 
cash donations at this point. Uh, today, John doesn't know this, but today uh, I received a commitment for all the concrete and all the stone required for this project. Whatever, whatever you need, it's yours. You tell me when and where it goes. Outstanding. So uh, that that's a big expense, and and that is taken care of. So we're we're well on our way. Uh, the park is just beautiful up there, and and I think this will fit in really nice. Um, and I thank the opportunity to talk with you, and and I hope you will give us permission to put it there in your park. I just want to say uh, this is a great opportunity for the city of Williamsport. We were talking, like I said, the commission was talking about the gold star. We're also talking about the blue star. And when we were approached with this, it just made my heart bleed. I mean, this is the backside of this is absolutely gorgeous. There are a few things that are we have to he his committee has to stick to. They can't change it. We can't uh, alter it anyway. It's got to be on the round circle. It's got to have the plates on the back. But the plates on the back, there's only one that has to stay. Yeah, there's four plates on the back of it that tell a story, and then uh, we can choose three of those four plates, and we can make it more community-oriented, some of those plates, yes. And uh, if you look at the silhouette in the middle, there's a soldier cut out standing there saluting at you. So we are excited about this, and I want to thank City Council for two weeks ago that you brought it up under comments under the uh, council's comments. That gave us a little head start so they can keep working on it and get approval. And uh, all we need now is the approval from city council, which we had a positive uh, commitment from the uh, public works to Bonnie Katz and their crew to bring it to the full body of council. And uh, Bonnie, you're right on October the 28th, if everything goes right, that A6 is moving. We just hope it goes right. <laughs> Thank you, Council, for letting us uh, give us our speech here today. I, I didn't mention this, but our goal is to un have an unveiling for this monument on Gold Star Families Day, which is the last Sunday in September. Mm -hmm. And I know there might be some things to work out uh, with John for the A6 and Tudor, but hopefully we're going to have them both there up and ready mm -hmm. by that time. But, uh, but yeah, that's our goal, just so you know, that's our schedule. Each one of you council members should have received the flyer uh, that's, that is uh, being distributed throughout the community. And uh, I'm open for any suggestions and help. Anybody like to come and help us? I'm always looking for help. And I got to tell you, the contractors and the community and the uh, material people that make the block, make concrete, uh, concrete Jersey Shore block, wall next, Oh, unbelievable how they just come out and help us. And it's making our fun and our park look beautiful. It's Penn College has done a great job up there. And I can't stop speaking enough about the Penn College schools and the nice job that they've done. If you look at our minutes that I send you every month, we've spent $92,000 already on what you see up there. If we would have had contractors help and pay for this and go to bid, we'd have been over $300,000 for the work that we're having done. So we are proud of that up there. And our, your commission that you have, Mayor Slaughter and commission and council members that you have, we are hard at work up there and we aren't stopping. <laughs> John, um, it's the, one of the things that you have to talk about is you are gonna be selling bricks for the Gold Star families, right? Did yes, you not bring that up? Yes, uh, Denny just mentioned that. Uh, he's going to set that up for Gold Star families. We're going to continue to sell the bricks. And if it comes in as a Gold Star family, we're going to sit down and talk about it. Maybe them bricks we can put over by from the A6 intruder, from the tank. We're going to continue our theme of the pavers and the red outline brick coming into the A6 over to the uh, Gold Star Family Monument. And in that area, we'll put their bricks. Yes, absolutely. And, and when we uh, start working on that program, uh, those contributions, every contribution we're, we're getting now is going to Herschel Woody uh, Williams Foundation earmarked for the Central Pennsylvania Monument. But when we start on that brick program, those donations we're gonna work on coming right to the Veterans uh, Committee. And uh, Memorial Day services next year, I believe it's the 23rd of May. Not quite sure the date right now. We are in the process of working, the committee is working to put in our booklet together 
for the dedication of the north wall. And if any, we will not dedicate the airplane yet because it won't be ready, but we should be close, but we'll hold that off for another time. But if any council member, and please come up and to our, our Memorial Day services, it's, uh, it's heartwarming. Thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate your passion and your dedication and your commitment and all the work that, that you're doing and, and that you're organizing for the future. Are there any comments from other council members? I don't see any, but uh, I know we're all 100% behind you and want to support whatever and whenever you do uh, improvements to the park. And uh, it is going to be a show. It's a showpiece now, but it's going to be quite, uh, quite something. Uh, Mr. Banks. I just want to say, you know, we don't have a, we're pretty far from any fort or base or camp here in North Central Pennsylvania. So it's nice to have this Veterans Park as a, as a link to that. Uh, you yeah. know, was, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Navy veteran, uh, Chief Hagen's a, an Army vet. So it's, um, it's nice to have that link to that culture. You know, it, it, no matter how much time you spent in the military, it's something that sticks with you. So. So thank you for all the work you guys do. Appreciate it. You can follow along. You can follow along. We Denny Bennett set up a Facebook page. It's called Lycoming County Veterans Memorial Park. Lycoming County Veterans Memorial Park. We have a Facebook page. And you'd be surprised. Just go on there. We put all our pictures, everything that's happening up there, who's doing what. And and as we move it along, and you'll be surprised how many people we've had look at it, commented on it, and also bought or downloaded the uh, application to buy a brick on there also and sent that in for to buy a brick. Mayor Slaughter. I just wanted to thank uh, the commission and uh, everyone for all of their hard work on this and also for your patience. Uh, the A6 intruder was quite a process uh, back and forth because it was a combat plane and added additional layers uh, to the process. So I just uh, wanted to thank uh, John and all of the commission members for their, their patience during that. But we are at the end. The A6 is, is almost here and that's very exciting. Uh, and I just thank you for all of the work that you've done at the park as well, echoing what everyone else has said. And it's absolutely incredible. And I, I know it's only going to get better. So thank you. Yeah, and I'd like to do all that, Mayor. Thank you for your help and patience with us. I know that we have a commission member that likes to do a lot of pushing. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you, Mayor, for being patient with us. Well, that's a wonderful uh, memorial and dedication. So we look forward to all of that. Um, Seeing no other comments, Mrs. Frank, on the resolution, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Pelizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Um, motion passes five zero. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, we'll move to item six. Um, would you read that in short form, please, Mr. Frank? A resolution authorizing the execution of a joint funding agreement between the U.S. Ge Geological Survey, Pennsyl Pennsylvania Water Science Center, United States Department of the Interior, and the City of Williamsport. We walk straight out. I'll, can I get out the gate? Yeah, you push the green button. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, is there a motion from council? So moved. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Um, uh, Mr. Winder, welcome to it. Good evening. Um, the resolution for you is a joint agreement with the U.S. Geological Survey Joint Funding. Um, this agreement is to collect river data. It is a key element in monitoring the river levels for the pump stations and part of the protection of the levee. 
Um, the amount that we would contribute is $1,725. It is an annual agreement. Um, and uh, it, it is for October 1st, 2020 through September 30th, 2021. And I'll take any questions you may have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Winder. Uh, this was reviewed in public work. Uh, yes, it or, did. No, finance, I'm sorry. That's right, it went to finance. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> uh, as, as Adam said, this is a yearly uh, resolution that comes to us and uh, it also helps with the MS4, right, Adam? Yes, ma'am. So uh, this is important. Uh, I think Adam covered the basis with this and uh, like I said, it was passed on to full body of council with a uh, positive recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Katz. Uh, comments or questions from council? Pretty straightforward. Uh, hearing and seeing none on the motion, please, Mr. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes five zero. Uh, we'll move to item seven, resolution authorizing the purchase of a 2020 ODB truck. Um, yeah, would you just read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? A resolution authorizing the purchase of a 2020 ODB 25CU truck mounted debris collector model 2106. Is there a motion and a second from council? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Winder. Um, yes, in 20 or February 20th of 2020, council approved the acceptance of the recycling grant. Um, within that grant, we were approved to purchase um, through the, with the money, approved to purchase a leaf collection machine, um, which is what this one is for. It is a 2020 ODB 25 cubic yard truck mounted debris collector. Um, and it is on a Freightliner model M2106 chassis. Um, it is definitely a key element for leaf collection, which is approaching us rapidly. Um, this machine would take and add to our fleet of uh, one-man operation machines. We currently have two. This would make the third one. Um, last year, we did put out the uh, traditional pull-behind leaf machine which then requires three to four employees to be with that machine. Um, this would definitely help the collection faster. Um, it would definitely free up some manpower to put them out on other things, filling potholes, different things of that nature. Um, the overall grant requires a 10% match. So on this resolution, as well as the next one, you'll see where we reference that the match is gonna be part of the brush pile automated gate system. Um, it will all be an in-kind services. Um, the Streets and Parks Department's installing all the conduit or ha has already installed all the conduit. We'll be running all the wiring, et cetera, for the gate system. So all the man hours and any material we may use in that process will invoice, will generate an invoice and turn that in with our invoices for the purchase of this equipment to cover the um, match that's required. Um, this purchase will be made through Stevenson Equipment. Stevenson Equipment is a um, CoStars dealer. Um, the leaf truck did come in slightly lower than what we had anticipated when we applied for the grant, which is definitely a good thing. Um, and as I said, uh, it is a Fabulous piece of equipment for the streets department. It does match the one other leaf truck that we do have. Um, our goal is to try to keep everything the same so that we have interchangeable parts, um, filters, things of that nature. And this was reviewed in finance and public works and both passed it on with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Winder. And that would be Mrs. Katz. Yes, this did come to both finance and public works and it did pass with a positive recommendation. Um, th 
thank goodness we did get this grant. I mean, it saved us a, a lot of money because we do need the equipment. It's helping with our brush pile. Um, also with this, this grant, um, I think we have to remind our citizens that this is a leaf pickup, not brush, and to be careful what you put on the curb. Um, and um, just really pleased that we were able to get this piece of equipment. Um, Adam, when, when this passes, how long will it take for this equipment to come in? They're telling me mid-November we could have it. Okay. So it will be used this year. Terrific, great. And uh, like I said, uh, this was passed with a positive recommendation and I think Adam covered all the, the bases with this. Okay, uh, thank you, Mrs. Katz. Other questions or comments from council members? Karen, seeing none, on the motion, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Jane. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Um, we'll move to item eight. Would you read that in short form, please? Right. Resolution authorizing the purchase of a 12 inch disc style brush bandit. Thank you. Ms. Frank. Motion and second from council. Move. Second. There's a motion and second. Mr. Winder. Um, this also was part of the um, recycling grant. Um, this is a 12 inch disc style brush bandit model 250 XP. Um, this also will be purchased from Stevenson equipment under the uh, CoStar state contract. Um, this piece of equipment will be replacing a 1997 model 250 with 2,265 hours on it. Um, they did give us a trade in of $5,000, which was exceptional because we did only pay $2,000 for the prior one that was used when we purchased it. Um, the new chipper would be $46,102. Um, this is a valued piece of equipment for our forester. Um, as you all are aware of the hazardous tree program, um, last year we took down roughly 120 trees within the hazardous tree program, street trees, trees within the park, um, during excessive storms that may knock down trees. This is a valued piece of equipment. Um, the reason we went with the bandit model or bandit brand is because I allowed the forester with his experience to choose exactly what machine he felt would best suit our needs. Um, and he chose the bandit itself. Um, this will also help. This also helps because when we remove a street tree or a fallen tree, whatever, um, by grinding it up definitely condenses the amount of space we use in the brush pile. Um, and when the tub grinder comes in to grind a brush up, it definitely makes it go a lot faster. So the hourly time that we pay for that piece of equipment to be there to grind up the brush um, naturally will reduce. This was reviewed by finance and public works both and passed on a positive recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Winder. Mrs. Kent, please. Yes, like Adam said, it did come to both finance and public works and pass with a positive recommendation. Again, uh, this was with the, the grant. And uh, again, be, if we didn't get the grant, it would be very difficult to get these, these pieces of equipment. So uh, it's gonna make everybody's job a little bit easier. Uh, and I think Adam explained this thoroughly at this point. Thank you, Mr. Um, um, question to comment from Council. Please straight forward again. Uh, Mr. Winder, thank you for your work on this. And uh, it's great to know we got the match from uh, from our in-house uh, in-kind service. So uh, it's you. a win-win there. Yeah. If I can just say um, the grant opportunity opens up again sometime between now and January from what DEP has told me. And the administration does plan to apply for it again because we did skip one year, which would have been 2020. Mm -hmm. Our grant was actually 2019. Okay, great. Be right on top of that then. Okay, uh, hearing and seeing no more comments. Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. 
Mr. Pulizzi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes by a vote. We move to item 10, certificate of appropriate 228 West Third Street. Is there a motion in the second on this? So move. move. Motion in the second. Mr. Girardi. Uh, yes, uh, what you have before you is a certificate of appropriateness request to erect two wall signs, um, two wall mounted business identification signs. Uh, one sign is for Vape Haven and the other sign is for the Asian market. Signs are approximately 30 inches by 44 inches wide. Um, I have attached photos and a sketch of what the signs will look like. Um, real quick, a little brief history. The Asian market used to be on Government Place, which runs um, north and south, and they relocated to Third Street. Um, there was a vape, actually they relocated to the vape store that was there um, because they expanded their growing and they needed more room. The vape store then turned around and there's a new one that went in place and it went in place where the Asian market is once. So what you have is a request to put up one sign that was already up, which you see on the building, and they relocated it and to put another sign down below for the vape haven. And if you have any questions for me, um, more than happy to answer them. Um, these signs meet the zoning ordinance, um, just as the other signs that you approve met the zoning ordinance. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Girardi. Questions or comments from council this evening? On this particular, Mrs. Katz. You're still muted, Bonnie. I know I'm muted. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad you clarified that uh, because I wondered why we were getting another sign for the Asian market because I thought we already did approve one for them. Uh, so they're moving to the front of the building right on Third Street on the corner there, right? Um, actually, one door. It's in the same building, but when you walk in, you have a, you have a tenant on the left and you have a tenant on the right. They're on the right hand side. And again, they had to enlarge because their business, they outgrew their business on government place. Hmm. Yeah. Fantastic. That's great. That's great to hear. It's great to hear when a business is growing. Right. Thank you very much. Yep. Other comments or questions? Mr. Banks. Just for clarification, Mr. Girardi, um, the Asian market sign, is it the same sign Will it remain in the same location or are they moving that sign? It's the same sign, but they relocated it to the corner of the building. Okay. Um, same size, same look, everything just relocated. So I figured we should reapprove it, even though it was previously approved maybe a year and a half ago. Gotcha. Thank you. Other comments or questions tonight? Hearing or seeing none on the uh, certificate, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Mr. Banks. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Uh, motion passes by vote. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, that brings us to item 11, except for filing the financial statement ending September 10th, 2020, Veterans Memorial Park Commission minutes, September 14th, 2020, finance meeting minutes of April 14th, 2020, controller's report from July 2020, and codes report from September 2020. Is there a motion in the second? So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Uh, comment or correction from council members tonight. Hearing and seeing none on the motion, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes, motion passes by vote. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, we'll move to item 12, announcements. I'm announcing we're gonna have an executive session following the adjourning, adjournment of the uh, public meeting for contract negotiation. Um, next regularly scheduled city council meeting will be held Thursday, November 5th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. remote. And the year is zipping by. Um, upcoming meetings, Friday, October 23rd at 11 a.m. tomorrow, ERC. Uh, they do have an agenda. Tuesday, October 27th, 11 a.m. 
Historic Preservation, Wednesday, October 28th at 11.30 a.m., Redevelopment Authority. Tuesday, November 3rd, 11.30 a.m., Public Safety, 1 p.m., Finance, 2.30 p.m., Public Works. And Thursday, November 5th is our next council meeting. Um, are there any uh, comments or questions from council tonight on anything? Um, I see none. Uh, anything from the administration tonight? Mr. Slaughter. Just one brief one at East Third Street will be opening tomorrow for public travel. I know it seems like it's been uh, forever uh, and has been quite some time. So we're very happy that that is opening. So tomorrow morning, I believe at 7.30 a.m., uh, it will be open uh, for public access. Is there going to be a ribbon cutting? <laughs> and actually, John Sander was working on that, but it, it actually opened uh, more quickly than we anticipated, which is a good thing. Um, so yeah. we are, John you know, is working on it. We, we'll probably do something small uh, here in the, here in the fu near future at some point. But That's we wanted, great. obviously, uh, to get it open first. And yeah. so uh, Absolutely. That came, yeah, PennDOT and, and others came back a little bit uh, more quickly. So that's a good thing. So the, the ribbon cutting. Yeah. That's so are we going to open it up and then shut it back down for the ribbon cutting? <laughs> no, 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 we're not doing that. <laughs> that that's the ultimate and bad PR. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Slaughter. Um, are there public comments tonight, Mr. White? Um, yes, Mr. Allison, there is one comment. Um, from uh, Karen Koch, 20, uh, East Third, 24 East Third Street in the city. Council President Allison, I've attached a photograph that I took at City Hall on the 14th of October. Photograph shows the Williamsport Bureau of Police SRT vehicle parked in the only accessible parking place at City Hall. Not only is the vehicle legally parked, it greatly interferes with access to the segregated accessible entrance. I emailed Chief Hagen for an explanation. The input from the, C, from the COP was that he did not know how long the vehicle had been illegally parked. This is not the first time that I've emailed Chief Hagen, the mayor and council president Allison with photos of employees violating the parking law. RVT vehicles, streets and parks vehicles, and Hagen's cruiser have all been photographed utilizing the accessible parking location. The city is working to develop a disability advisory commission to better understand the needs of the disability community. Perhaps a good start would be not permitting city employees to use the accessible parking place for their convenience. If a picture says a thousand words, this photo says that respected value 